Hey internet, welcome back to my channel. Today I have an exciting video. Exciting for me because it's a new planner sort of video which is always an exciting time for me. And this is my 2021 Whistle & Birch planner. So I'm going to be using this planner predominantly for memory keeping. For most of 2020 I was skipping around. I started off with the Erin Condren Life Planner. I then went without a memory journaling sort of planner and then I settled on Whistle & Birch. So I have my 2020 which is about half filled. But I've always been more of a January to December sort of person so I wanted to start fresh in a brand new planner and I feel like Whistle & Birch is perfect for me because they still let me use all the sticker kits that I love, that I own, that I make and they are an Australian based brand. I'm pretty sure this is the owner's side hustle that she works a regular job on the side so I feel like that resonates so much with me given that is exactly my position. So I haven't even really opened it yet that's why it still has this on it. I also had this little sheet of plastic if you noticed at the start. I had specifically asked the owner, I think her name is Stephanie, if I could have an extra piece of plastic which is the plastic they use to make the covers. You can kind of see it fits perfectly but it doesn't have any of the holes because the one thing I didn't like about this planner last year when I did the review is that it doesn't have a bookmark so there's no way to really get to the page that I'm currently using. So I thought if I could ask for an extra piece of this which she threw it in for free so I'm very grateful for it. I could maybe try and figure out how to make my own bookmark. I have not figured that out yet and I'm very nervous to cut this so I've just kind of kept it to the side but I'm just showing you that at some point I hopefully will make a bookmark out of it so that I can bookmark the current week that we're in so I can easily flip to them. But yeah, so I'm not actually going to be planning in this video per se. I'm not going to be putting any stickers down. I'm going to be putting a bunch of post-it notes down. So for the last five, six years, every time I started a new life planner, I would always spend, the minute it got in, I would always put down a ton of post-it notes. And it's usually things to mark down any birthdays, any public holidays, any significant events, or any time I was going to travel. Unfortunately the travel thing is just not happening so I'm not going to mark down any travel yet. Hopefully that comes eventually. But I'm going to mark down all the birthdays, public holidays and events so that when I do go through it and actually start putting down stickers I'm just kind of reminded because it's physically there. I do this every single year. I've just never videoed myself doing it before and I thought it would be a fun video to do. So these ones, I'm going to be so bad because I actually don't remember where most of these post-it notes come from. But these are probably one of my most favorites because you have plenty of space to write. They stick really well and I actually have ended up using these as labels for a lot of my containers for stationery. Unfortunately on containers they don't stick as well but they, they work a treat in the planner and that's all that really matters. I'm going to use these more to mark out birthdays. And then I have a couple here. So these are Erin Condren post-it notes. I know I don't use Erin Condren anymore but I still have a ton of leftover post-it notes and it feels really wasteful not to use them so I'm just trying to use them up. I also have a few of these. I think these ones are from Daiso. They're just so cute, these little teddy bears. But um, I'm not sure what pack they came out of but they were floating around. So I'm not sure which one I'll use for what just yet. I've just kind of pulled out a bunch of post-it notes that I want to use. So yeah, let's just go through week by week. It's going to be kind of a walk through what 2020, 2020, 2021, sorry, we're still in 2020, but this is for 2021. Hopefully 2021 is going to be much better than 2020. So first up, I'm going to just take this off. It's always so nice to crack into a new planner. Um, the design I went for was a blue, kind of like a blue version of what I had for 2021. I've still got my 20, well I guess it's 2021 slash 20, what am I saying? I'm getting so mixed up. This is my 2020 slash 21 um, Whistle and & Birch and this is what it looked like. I really like this but I wanted something different for just 21. This one starts in July and finishes in June. Um, so I'm only filling it up till December and then I'm switching over to this one. So let's just, I guess this is going to be a little bit of a flip through as well because I know she updated the tabs. The tabs look a little different. Let me just pull this out so you can see. See the font is a little bit different, is it? No, the font's fine but I think the colors of the tabs are a bit more solid now. So there's a few tweaks and changes but I don't think much actually got changed to be honest. So you have your notes section, I just skipped right over it. Dashboard, I don't actually use any of these dashboards. I might actually glue them together later, which I'll explain why. This is the 
yearly view. Whoops. Let me just move this so you can see the whole thing. And then you have a quote. So when you lift up a tab, the first thing you're going to see is this dashboard, which I, I don't use any of this. I don't think I ever will. What I really want to see is this view, the monthly view. What I was doing in my old um, journal is that I actually glued these two pages together so that when you pulled the tab, the first thing you saw was this. So for example, if I was to say, um, pull August up and I just pull it straight up, you're going to go straight to the monthly view because yeah, I glued these two pages together. I uh, don't know if I'll do it for 2021, probably because functionally it's way easier for me. But yes, all right, so where do we start? Maybe I'll use these big ones to mark public holidays. That feels more appropriate. And then, so if I use the big ones for public holidays and then I want to make note of when I take annual leave, maybe I'll use this guy for annual leave. And then, no, wait. I think I'll use these ones for public holidays, these ones for annual leaves, and then I'll use these ones because they're just cuter. I just feel like they need a bit more of a special place. I'll use them for significant events that are not public holidays, birthdays, or anything like that, like the, the Lunar New Year and um, Setsuban and some of those sort of cultural celebrations. Okay, I just realized I probably need to have a digital calendar up so I know what's happening. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to use a ballpoint pen for this one because I think the gel pens, they always have iffy drying time and I don't want to be marking up the planner with ink yet. I usually save that for the sticker kits. So I just, I'm not really sure how to film this. I'm just kind of going to wing it and see how I go. So we've got New Year's Eve, well not New Year's Eve, New Year's Day. And then it's actually New Year's Eve, oops, this too? Nope, it's just a really thick, thick post-it note then and i think that's pretty much it for this week right pretty sure um there's different cultural celebrations that i do but i don't do all of them um but i'm trying to recognize the ones that i feel like are important for me and my family so um you'll have to forgive me if i miss them new year's eve and then new year's day and I'm just going to put public because it just means it's like an official day off work, which who doesn't love an official day off work? And then I've actually got leave booked for these four days. So actually my annual leave starts pretty much on these days. It goes for two weeks. It's kind of like a mandatory sh shutdown period. I feel like most companies are doing mandatory shutdown periods now because thanks to um, everything that's been going on, most people aren't been aren't what, what am i saying have not been taking um leave annual leave i've been taking a little bit but definitely not as much as i normally would have because in my company at least most people take annual leave to travel overseas and we've not been able to do that to be honest if you live in melbourne you, you have not been able to travel really anywhere sometimes not even within the state itself for a long time so it makes sense that most people just felt, what's the point of taking leave? I'm just going to keep working. So because of that, there's been a lot of leave build up and companies don't like a lot of leave build up because it's a big liability. And so that's why we all have been asked to take some leave. So yeah, I'm taking all of this week off as well. Although I think this is the only leave I have planned thus far. Don't have any other days off I'm planning at the moment. Kind of just waiting out and seeing what's going to happen, if there's a place we can travel. Um, I, th I reckon we'll probably be doing quite a lot of Australian-based travel for a little while, which is fine because I love Australia. And there's a lot of places to still visit. A lot of places I haven't visited that I still want to visit. And I might put another orange down. I kind of just pull the post-it notes that I feel there's quite a lot of them. I like to just wear them down equally. It's not weird. So, leave. It's kind of a pity that all this leave is post-December because I feel like December for me, um, YouTube and sticker shop and stuff wise is going to be really busy, but I'm going to be still working. And then for this whole period for two weeks, I'll have no work, but the, the work for that stuff also will die down. So, um, I don't know, maybe I should pick up a new video game or something to seek some time into. 
Okay, so now, next week of January. Okay, I don't think there's anything here, so I'll go to the next one. There's a lot going on here. A lot of birthdays. At least a lot of birthdays for our friends and families, so I'm gonna... And I kind of pull these off in the same way. I just pull off whatever um, is the largest pile until I hopefully wear them all down equally. I don't know why I do that. It just feels like the right thing to do. <laughs> Not that there's a right way or a wrong way to use these. Okay, yeah, I have to keep flipping my planner up to write in it. I find it really awkward to write on it when it's like totally flat. Um, so we've got Lexi's birthday on the 19th. Um, Lexi is the daughter of one of my best friends who is coming up next. She's the daughter of Faye. Faye's one of my best friends and Faye's birthday is on the Friday. So I'll just note that down. And then my mum's birthday is here. So it is a birthday heavy week for sure. But I'm excited. And then if we flip over, we have a public holiday. The 26th is Australia Day. So let's put down this purple one. And so I'll just mention public holiday. You know, then it kind of makes sense to take some annual leave here. So I might book leave so I can get the four day weekend. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how things go. Australia Day, and I don't think there's anything else. You know, it'd be so embarrassing if I missed out on somebody's birthday. That's what I'm worried about. Hopefully if I do, they're not watching this video. Okay, so now we're gonna flip over to February. So February, I have, don't think I have anything major. I know Setsuban is on the 2nd of Feb, so I might just mark that down. For those of you who don't know, Setsuban is a Japanese cultural, I guess it's not a holiday because it's not like a recognized national holiday that anyone takes off, but it's kind of a fresh, I see it as a fresh start. Like the nickname they have is um, bean throwing. Okay, why is this not working? Okay, there you go, Setsuban. A bean throwing sort of <laughs> cultural celebration. Um, and it's really just more like getting rid of evil spirits and stuff. Not that I necessarily subscribe to all those sort of things, but it's very similar to some of the stuff that I celebrated growing up as a kid. So I thought I'd just mark that down. So flip over. And so we have quite a lot going on here. I think the Lunar New Year is on the 12th. So I definitely have to put that in. My family celebrates that. It's not a public holiday in Australia, but I know it is for a lot, a lot of parts of Asia. So the Lunar New Year, um, it's JT's birthday on Saturday, so I have to put that down. JT is one of my other friends. I have like quite a few people I'd consider my best friend, and he's one of them. JT's birthday, and then 14th is Valentine's Day. So I'll have to, I'm just going to put V-Day. I don't actually celebrate Valentine's Day, but it, it'd be a nice day to just mark down anyways. And this would be a good week to make. Actually, this is going to be a confusing one because I don't know whether I want to use my Lunar New Year kit or Valentine's Day kit. I think I'm going to use the Lunar New Year kit for this one because that's actually something I personally celebrate. I'm not really a Valentine's Day sort of person. So that's that week. And then I don't think there's, anything major these next couple weeks. Oh, we've got the Lantern Festival. I used to celebrate these a lot more when I was a child. And then as I got older, I kind of, I don't know, it kind of ignored them because I just felt like it wasn't relevant to me and I was just very focused on other things. But the older I get, I guess this is typical of most people, the older I get, the more I come back to like my heritage and things that I used to do as a child and just stuff around family. And it's just really meaningful to me now, so yeah. But this is typically more for spring, so a lot of these feel weird in a way because it's very much a Northern Hemisphere sort of celebration, whereas at this point we're going into autumn, so yeah, we're kind of flipping it, but that's cool. So now we go into March. So first week of March, we have James's birthday. 
Oops, this one's already bent, so I'm going to take this. This one, for some reason, it got bent. This is on the 4th. Man, do you know that the last time I saw Violet and Jimmy was actually for James's birthday in March this year, so marking this down is just really weird. It would be so sad if the next time I see them was for James's birthday again. I'm going to be marking like a whole year. And then we have a public holiday here. We have Labor Day for Victoria. I don't actually know if it's Victoria only because I feel like the other states have their own Labor Days. At least it feels like they're on different times, but I'm not sure. I'm only really familiar with Victoria's public holiday. So Labor Day. I don't think there's anything for a couple weeks. Um, but I think we have Good Friday, so that's another public holiday that I'll put down. That's when Easter starts. Actually, um, that's Oscar's birthday, who is JT's oldest son. So I marked down, they're my best friends, and that's why I marked down their, their kids' birthdays as well, because we celebrate everything, like, we celebrate all of that together. So public, uh, Good Friday, and then we have... Oscar's birthday. Here we go. Which means on the flip side, in April we should have Easter Monday, which is another public holiday in Australia. So the 5th. Put that down here. So many public holidays at the start of the year and then we just kind of go through a drought where there's like no public holidays it's really annoying okay so let's see keep going nothing here that's my brother's birthday so i have to mark that down obviously This is so awkward because the spiral's right there, so my handwriting goes really funny. But I'm just going to put that down there. And actually, Anzac Day is on the 25th as well. Unfortunately, because it falls on a Sunday, we don't actually get the public holiday. I'll still note it down because it is a pretty symbolic observance in Australian history. But it's not technically a public holiday. And I think because of its significance, we don't pass on the public holidays. So like if Boxing Day or Christmas was on one of the weekends, then you'd get the Monday off. So you'd still get your public holiday, but they don't do that for Anzac Day. I think it's more um, out of a respect, this sort of thing. So nothing then. And then we go into May. I think May is actually a pretty quiet month. There's not a lot going on. I know Violet's birthday is here, 28th. Use this one. Got Violet's birthday marked down, but I think that's it. Yeah, May's pretty quiet. Nothing going on for us. Um, and then we come to June. So I think June is the last of the public holidays. Trust me to remember that. But I feel like when you work, you live by the public holidays. And we have Queen's birthday on the 14th. Queen's birthday. I don't think it's her actual birthday. I don't know why it's there. I never actually bothered to research or look it up. And then Tobias's birthday is on the Sunday this year. So let's mark that down, obviously, because it's my husband's birthday. It's going to be a really important time for me. that down and then I think for June there's nothing else which I think June is 
not June, July. So now we're coming into July, but I actually think July is a really quiet month because I can't think of a single thing. And I even have my, like, I have my Google Calendar up just to make sure that I'm keeping track of some of this stuff, and there's nothing here. So I'll just skip over to August. There's a lot of stuff happening in August. Okay, so first of all, okay, now we're in August. So... Now I know Tanabata is somewhere around here. I think it's on the 14th this year. So Tanabata is a Japanese cultural observance. It's, um, so it's not recognized in Australia and I, I'm pretty sure it's probably only recognized in Japan. But the reason I really like it is because I like the concept of the whole writing down your wishes and thoughts and tying them on bamboos. I don't know, there's something about that that just feels very refreshing and very motivating and inspiring. So that's why I like to just recognize that. And the other thing I need to recognize is on the 11th is my anniversary. So it will be 18 years of togetherness. Put it that way, togetherness, five years married. And if you've dated someone for a really long time before you actually get married, you know why that first date is so important. Those 13 years, I can't lose those 13 years. It's a long time, a big part of my life. So that's our anniversary, um, Tanabata. And then, is there anything else in August? Why do I feel like there's more in August, but I can't remember? I mean, it's not a big deal. I can always come back to it later, I guess. Yeah. I'm just gonna skip over. I know the mid-autumn festival is sometime in September this year. Well, not this year, 2021. Um, I keep thinking of it as Mooncake Festival because <laughs> the main thing I do during mid-autumn festival is just eat a ton of mooncakes. But I know that there's proper celebration. There's actually, I'm probably already missed a different holiday. I remember there being a holiday somewhere between a bit earlier where we kind of give respects to our ancestors who passed. My grandmother used to celebrate that a lot and I can't remember the name or the date so I might have to retrospectively go back after I finish this part of the video, I guess. Um, but I think Mid-Autumn Festival is 21st. If I'm, I'm looking at a calendar, it says 21st. It's an actual holiday. I'm pretty sure in China it's an actual holiday. I'm not sure about if it's in Singapore, if my relatives celebrate it there. But um, it's definitely a recognized thing. I used to celebrate this as a kid as well. So I'm just going to write it down. And... I have in my Google Calendar that this is supposed to be a public holiday, the AFL like grand final day, but in 2020 that actually got shifted a day, a month out because of the whole everything going on, Victoria going into the second wave, so AFL got moved up into Queensland. I have no idea what's happening in 2021 and how that's going to play out, so I might actually just leave it for now and not bother putting anything down and just hopefully get a bonus public holiday. So let's keep going to October. So October, I don't know if there's anything during the month. I know that there's Halloween at the end, which is a Sunday for 2021. So I'm going to put that down with this one. So I don't necessarily do much for Halloween personally, um, but my niece loves to go trick-or-treating, so I can't wait to do her makeup. That would be exciting if she still wants her makeup done. The older she gets, the more I think she's going to slowly drift away from the whole Halloween concept. November. Alright, so November is the first month we get our public holidays back. So Tuesday is Melbourne Cup. It's a, I think it's a Victorian only public holiday to be honest. I don't think the other states do it. Trust us to have a public holiday dedicated to horse racing. I don't personally participate or do anything for Melbourne Cup. I don't know, I feel iffy about the whole horse racing stuff, but I will take the day off work. Any excuse to take a day off work. And then I think we have Anthony's birthday. Anthony's birthday is on the 21st of November.
So Anthony is... I'm not sure if you guys know, he's online, he's called Harry Muppet and he's really more of a gamer so if you're in the gaming industry maybe you would have come across some of this stuff but otherwise he's just a friend from university that we still keep in touch with. He's um, always been one of our really close friends. So I don't think there's anything left in November. Oh, you know, I just realized, I was clicking through and I realized it's the Ghost Festival, that's the one I was referring to. It's called Bon in Japanese, but um, in Chinese I'm going to massacre it if I try to say it myself. So I'm not going to, but I just refer to it as the Ghost Festival. It's really interesting how so many Japanese festivals actually like relate or originated from some of the Chinese festivals, um, which is why I kind of like recognizing them because I feel like it's still semi-related to a lot of the things I used to do as a kid. But that's on the 22nd of August. So if we flip back to the 22nd, here we are, this one here. So I'm gonna just write both names, Bon Festival, Ghost. My grandma used to acknowledge this a lot. So my grandma um, was a very active practicing Buddhist and so she would celebrate that a lot. She talked to her own mum a lot. And when we go visit her, she would get us to participate. That's why it kind of sticks in my mind quite a bit. All right, so we're going back to November. We did the public holiday. We had Anthony's birthday on the 21st. And I think now we're just gonna move on to December, which is gonna be a super active month. December is like busy. So a year from now. So we have a couple birthdays. We have my niece's birthday. Um, I'm gonna put hers down here. She's on the 8th. And actually I'm gonna have to flip this because of the spiral. Her name's Elena's. Well, not Elena's. Her name is Elena. It's Elena's birthday. And then my birthday is on the lucky year number 13. I say that in jest. But honestly, I don't really believe in 13 being an unlucky number, so it's my birthday. And then a week later is my dad's. So I was born just a week away from his. My birthday is actually supposed to be on the 18th of December. That was like the original date, but apparently I had some heart issues. At least my heart wasn't very strong or beating, so they had to induce me to get me out a couple days sooner, which I'm pretty sure my parents were freaking out because I'm their first kid. <laughs> but it turned out okay, I'm still here. <laughs> okay, so on the 20th, so we have 25th is Christmas. Now, this is technically a public holiday, but because it's a Saturday, it's going to get moved out. Same with Boxing Day, so what I might do is I'm going to use these little ones just to mark down the actual day of Christmas and Boxing Day. You know, I really love, I just noticed that Whistle & Birch doesn't actually put any holidays in the calendar. So it really makes it open to whatever you want to celebrate. And I really appreciate that. Because the thing I didn't like about the Erin Condren is that it kind of forced upon you all the American holidays. And we're not all American. There's some days that I'll celebrate, like Halloween is quite an American holiday, so we celebrate it in Australia, and I know Black Friday, but I actually don't know when Black Friday is because we don't celebrate um, Thanksgiving in Australia. It's not really, not really a thing. Okay, but these two days will be public holidays because of Christmas and Boxing Day, so that's when I'll put this down. So I'm just going to put public for now. I just know that the days off work. <laughs> it's like the most important thing. It's a day off work, so it needs to be recognized. Um, and it's going to be the same. This is New Year's, New Year's Eve, which are just, we'll get the um, Monday, subsequent Monday off. But I don't think this, yeah, it doesn't. So that will be next, next year's journal. I'll have to mark that in. And New Year's. And I'm pretty sure that is everything that I have to mark. 
There's all these other pages at the back, which I don't know if I've seen in the previous, in 2020's version, because I haven't gone back far enough. You've got your January monthly here. And you've got a little notes section. And what's this? Just kind of a, a random a timetable, monthly expense, assessment tracker. There's a few other bits and pieces. Pockets. I really love these pockets, but I probably won't be using any of those. I'm just going to be using the weekly views. And that is pretty much it. So that's what I do every time a new planner comes into my hands, especially when it's this like the sticker kit planner. I don't know how else to word it because I do use other planners, but I don't do the same thing in those planners. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. This is Selena reporting from my room. Back to you, internet. Mm -hmm.